Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diana Soleimanova. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science at Brunel University, London. Prior to that, I was a research fellow in multi-scale migration prediction within the VECMA project. And now currently I'm also a research knowledge exchange co coordinator for CVA project, uh, where we aim to uh, organize different types of hackathons, seminars, and workshops in the use of VVEQ. So if you're interested in the future events within the VECMA uh, project, please uh, let me know after my talk. So today's talk, I'll be focusing on the state-of-the-art methods and tools within the VVEQ. Uh, to start with, uh, all models are abstractions of the real activity that are based on many different types of approximations. Uh, these models are uh, formulated and uh, programmed in a digital computer, which produce different types of simulation results. These simulation results after analyzed, uh, and they may have uh, fidelity uh, that might be under question. So there's a question for us to ask uh, whether these uh, results that we obtain actually have high fidelity or they might actually make uh, no sense to us. That's why to answer these questions, I want to, to draw your attention to the concept uh, developed or framework developed by Society of Computer Simulation. Uh, they also raised by modeling simulation and simulation or also known as operations research. Uh, they suggested two uh, types of models when you're trying to uh, create a model of real activities and they base it in the conceptual model. Whereas the second model focused on the computerized model. And uh, while they identified these two types of models, they also tried to investigate the model qualification and why they meant between um, the reality and conceptual model the qualification is that it's a determination of adequacy of the conceptual model to provide an acceptable level of agreement for the domain of intended application. Whereas the main focus was to define verification and validation that they wanted to understand that exists within conceptual model when you're trying also to computerize your model and obtain some kind of results. And uh, how they defined verification is that verification deals with the relationship between conceptual model and the computerized model, whereas validation deals with the relationship between the computer, computerized model and the, the reality. Uh, of course, there are many other definitions that exist that, uh, for example, S, uh, SME uh, guide provides us. But the important aspect within this is that we should not forget about the uncertainty, uncertainty quantification. When we're trying to understand what is uncertainty, in the most literature, there are two different types of uncertainties that come along. First is the allegatory, uh, allegatory, meaning that uncertainty due to inherent randomness. What it exactly describes is that it is the natural variability of point of interest that you're trying to understand within your model. Whereas the second type of uncertainty, which is the epistemic, it tries to identify uncertainty due to the lack of knowledge. So any type of uh, knowledge, it might have uh, some kind of uh, lack and uh, it also potentially reducible by acquiring more knowledge. So after defining these two different types of uncertainties, what we can understand is that in the literature by uh, Oberkampf and Roy in 2010, they defined three steps that can be applied when you're trying to uh, use models and try to run different types of simulations. And in identifying uncertainty, these three steps uh, are, first is when you try to characterize the source of uncertainty. Which kind of uncertainty do I have within my model? Whether it's the first one or second one, or it can be combination of both. Also, after you identify uh, the type of uncertainty you have within your model or in your input parameters, what you try is to propagate your uncertainty inputs within your uncertain model that actually provides uncertain outputs that actually reflects to the analysis 
were you able to achieve by ensemble of cumulative uh, distribution functions, or you can have different types of sensitivity analysis, such as Sobel indices, for example, to achieve the results that you want to obtain. Um, so within the EQ or VVEQ uh, area field, there are different types of tools that can actually help you in understanding how you can identify within your model the uncertainty quantifications. So here, for example, in the table on the right-hand side, you can see that there's a list which are prominent tools that exist. So I'm going to view a number of them, uh, which is the quota focusing on optimization in DQ, and also general purpose and certain propag pro propag propagation, surrogate modeling and sensitivity analysis, model calibration. So it provides a different types of analysis that you, know, you can apply. Uh, whereas UQ Toolkit, it's a set of different components and tools that are available to quantify uncertainty. And it allows you to run surrogate models and then achieve uh, analyze sensitivity analysis. And then also the uh, additional aspects within the UQ Toolkit. These both tools were uh, developed in the Sandia National Laboratory in the US. Whereas uh, UQ Pi is a Uncertainty quantification with Python. It's a package provided by uh, within the Python that you can actually use within your simulations to understand the uncertainty within your model. Uh, the key aspects within the EQPI is that it has uncertainty propagation and stochastic processes. And it's based on Python language, as I mentioned earlier. Another tool that I want to mention is the UQ Lab, and the UQ Lab uh, is a MATLAB-based uh, tool. And uh, if you think about it, there are other tools that are here, which are developed in R, uh, Python, MATLAB, or C++, or other uh, languages can be used as well. At the same time, you can operate with these tools within uh, your desktops, which can be Windows operating system, Linux, or Mac. At the same time, you're able to run on the supercomputers. So in relation to the UQ lab, is that it, uh, the main purpose or general purpose of it is the uncertainty propag propagation, surrogate modeling and sensitivity analysis. So if you think about it, they all have similar aspects that they want to uh, achieve. But today I want to draw your attention to a different tool, but also focusing on the VVEQ. So uh, the main tool that focuses on UQ analysis is, oops, sorry, the easy VVEQ and uh, focusing on validation and verification is FAPSIN3. These two tools uh, were developed or are the components of the VECMA toolkit. VECMA toolkit is a uh, toolkit that was developed within the VECMA project that we worked in the last three years. So to give more details about the EZVVQ, EZVVQ stands for Verification, Validation, and Uncertainty Quantification that aims to make it easy as possible to implement advanced techniques for uncertain quantification for existing application. So any application user I, are able to download using PIP, the EZVQ software, and able to run UQ analysis or sensitivity analysis. It primarily focuses on non-intrusive UQ techniques. What it means that you don't have to, uh, when you run your model, you don't need to make the various changes, the main aspect is that you are able to quantify uncertainties and analyze the uh, uncertainties or parameter sensitivities. Here's the basic workflow of the EZVVQ. What you have is that you have an input or model parameter description where you provide minimum maximum values of your parameters within your model. And uh, what happens after within the EZVVQ, these input parameters are sampled. When you try to sample, uh, there can be different types of sampling methods that are also included in the ZVVQ. I'll describe them in the next slide. Uh, and then after sampling, what you're able to is to create an sample of simulation where you can run these different types of parameters with different propagated numbers. And uh, you can execute it. After execution, you're able to obtain uh, your results. So you're able to post cross-process and analyze. And uh, after analyzing, you understand, okay, 
do I actually, the source of uncertainty in the fight, did I actually understand whether it was in the fight? If it was, then you stop your uncertainty quantification analysis. If it wasn't, you go back to sampling and perform the same set of steps again. In relation to EZVQ sampler methods, there are, at the moment, we have Monte Carlo, Quasi Monte Carlo, polynomial cost expansion, stochastic collocation, adaptive stochastic collocation sparse grids that Wout mentioned today. And uh, there are more other methods that are in the plan to be added. Uh, all these methods can be used to calculate Sobel sensitivity indices. And as you can see in the graph on the right-hand side, is a, an illustration of how Sobel indices are identified. Again, this graph is very familiar to you as you've seen it in the previous presentation. Uh, what you have on the x-axis is the number of simulation days that you have. On the y-axis is the Sobel indices ranging from zero to one. And uh, you're able to use EasyVQ when you obtain your simulation results and visualize your results by seeing the all the output results that you have per parameters you also to uh, you're able to plot the most important or influential parameters within your simulation and uh, you can also visualize each single parameter how there's uh, sobel indices within these parameters uh, in relation to the enhances workflow so is is integrated with the rest uh, of Python-specific infrastructure, and it accesses through the wide range of sampling approaches uh, using uh, KSPy. Uh, it adapts user existing code via extension of encoder or decoder classes. What do I mean by that is that here you have the sampling, another workflow uh, demonstration of the EZVQ here. You have the sampling of your input parameters. We're able to encode within the EZVQ the number of parameters that you have and what kind of ranges you want to use that stores stored within the ZVVQ. After you encode your input parameters, you're able to execute, which is afterwards decoded, meaning that all the output that you achieve are actually stored within the campaign database within the ZVVQ. And from that campaign database, you're able to take your output and analyze and obtain your results understand which input parameter actually influential uh, to your simulation output. In relation to the EZVVQ, now the main point just I wanted to highlight is that it minimizes boilerplate code requirements, meaning that you don't need to make big adjustments within your application or within EZVVQ in order to understand or to implement the UQ analysis. So we try to minimize the setup overhead for each application user. Also, it takes care of bookkeeping, meaning that you can create different types of folders within EZVQ, it can store results, as well as it collects all the meta info uh, in the database. So the, one of the things that Walter was mentioning when the number of samples with polynomial orders expanded, EZVQ has capacity of storing these results as well as, the, uh, an, uh, as, well as to analyze them. Uh, EZVVQ can be executed locally, meaning that in your local machine without installing any additional tools apart from EZVVQ, you're able to run your executions. You can also integrate EZVVQ with the supercomputer. So one of the instances, for example, we've used within our project is the Eagle supercomputer in Poznan using the QCG pilot job uh, scheduler. Uh, it also integrates with FAPSIM3 it's automation toolkit that I will describe in the coming slides, as well as with the Dusk. Another main advantage of using EZVQ is that you're able to execute it on cloud HPC using Kubernetes. Diana, you have five minutes more. Thank you. So in relation to the FabSim3, so FabSim3 is a user developed oriented automation curation toolkit. So it aims to automate any functionalities or tasks that you'd like to perform within your application using the FabSim3 toolkit. So it reduces the human effort required to create, modify, repurpose complex computational workflows. It also uses generic pattern code for UQ analysis and the VNV. 
Uh, I'll demonstrate more details about the VNB. VNB. So again, FAPSIM3 can be uh, executed locally on supercomputer or in a QCG broker or pilot job uh, schedulers. FAPSIM3 is generic in nature. However, the specific plugins are within the FAPSIM3 that are focused on your application. So I can give you an example. As I said, I was a research fellow in multi scale migration prediction. And I have my own plugin within the FAPSIM3, which is called FAPFLEE, which has its own application with the different automated tasks where I'm able to run my UQ analysis, VNV analysis, as well as to perform high number of executions, whether the ensemble runs or the replica runs. These are the uh, examples of the executions. So you have the main command, which is FAPSIM3, local host if you're running on your local machine or Eagle machine if you're running it on supercomputer. And then this is the main uh, functionalities that you have within the FAPSIM that you're able to use as well. In relation to the VNV patterns in FAPSIM 3, uh, so the main important aspect was within the VECMA project as well is not to only develop different types of uh, implementation for the UQ analysis, but also try to verify and validate. And what we've done is that we developed four different types of VNV uh, within the FAPSIM 3. So here are some of the examples. So stable intermediate forms, level of refinement, ensemble output validation, and quantity of interest distribution comparison. Uh, you can read more about this in the link here. Presentation will be also available for your own use. I'm just gonna go forward. To give an example about the multi-scale migration prediction, how it's used for the uh, VVEQ, is that this is the general framework that we applied when we were constructing our migration model. First, you have different types of uh, problems that you would like to select. So for example, I'm focusing on a conflict in Nigeria and there's uh, people who are fleeing from that to neighboring countries. So I choose a country and the period I want to focus on. Afterwards, I obtain data from public databases that provide me conflict locations where these uh, conflicts happen within the country, uh, geospatial data, and then the total number of refugees within that country. After obtaining all this information, I'm able to construct my model that provides me different aspects that I've gathered in my data selection process. After constructing my model, I'm able to refine it with additional information that I get from other databases or from the reports that are available about this uh, conflict. Um, and then uh, we use FLEE code, it's an agent based code. Uh, that allows us to dis uh, distribute incoming refugees within a conflict country that are actually fleeing to a neighboring camps. Um, and uh, you're able to run ensemble simulations or sensitive analysis using this code, it's publicly available. Um, after running our code, we're able to actually get our results and validate it against the, the data that we have from the UNHCR database. So this is general framework that we applied. So here within this model, what do we have is that we need to verify our model. How do we actually know that our model is true to the reality? Another aspect is we would like to validate. So within our framework, we do have validation aspect already where we achieve our simulation results from the simulation and we compare it to the actual historical data. And then the UQ part is within our input data that we obtain as well as in our simulation execution. So how our simulation output is impacted by the uh, input parameters that we have or the key assumptions within our model. And uh, this is a general uh, VECMA migration tube map uh, where we are able using the migration application to integrate with EasyVVEQ and FAPSIM3 and we're able to run on the supercomputer using QCG pilot job or we can actually use FAPSIM3 and directly integrate it with the supercomputer. Or there's another option, you can actually use migration application, run different types of simulations, for example, ensembles, replicas within the FAPSIM3 and execute it through the QCG pilot job. Another aspect is that I showed you different types of validation and verification patterns. And you're also able to do that within the FAPSIM3 by running using the QCG client or QCG broker. QCG client, broker, and QCG pilot job, they are the uh, schedulers that are available 
uh, within the Poznan uh, Poznan supercomputer. Um, so in depth, just to provide more uh, information about how do you actually use ZVVQ for migration, is that the first, of course, you need to install all the softwares. After installing, what you do is you define the space parameters. So you define the input parameters, minimum and maximum values. After which you identify and assess uncertain input distributions. And step three, your generation of the required samples and runs. Here's a small illustration. I'm inside the Fabfli, the plugin that I mentioned. I'm able to go to the uh, sensitive analysis. Here I specify my parameters that I would like to investigate. And uh, I also choose only two parameters, for instance. I am able to also provide what kind of sampling method I want to use. And also you provide the polynomial order that you like to have within your execution. So just to go again, so parameters, the selection of parameters that you like to investigate only, and then you provide the polynomial order, and then also the sampling method. And then after you execute it in the, you execute and you get your results. After getting the aggregation of the output, you analyze, analyze and calculate the sensitivity of your uh, input parameters to the simulation output. And also you explore and visualize update database if you have any issues or you're not satisfied with the output result that you obtained, you go back and you perform your analysis again. To demonstrate, this is my couple of last slides. In relation to the results, so as I mentioned, we performed UK analysis within migration use case. So as you can see, we've done two different types of uh, analysis. First is sensitive analysis based on dimension reduction, where we use six and seven different types of parameters and we used polynomial chaos expansion as well as stochastic collocation with polynomial order of two and the three. Here you can see the polynomial order of three. Uh, yeah, three, four, uh, seven parameters, and uh, we had more than 16,000 runs. And you're able to see again within the visualization I mentioned, you have the simulation days, and then you have the Sobel indices. And they can see from here that my camp move chance, which is a parameter assumption within my model, has the highest uh, impact. So it's the most influential parameter. If I want to modify it uh, or use different types of uh, ranges that I can actually do that and then perform another set of analysis. And here what we have is the uh, efficient sampling. So we try to measure uncertainty caused by stochastic model for evolving violent events on the output. So we also uh, worked on different types of propagation of conflict events that can happen in the future. And we tried to analyze how this actually affects and we tried to uh, visualize and understand the uncertainty quantification within that. In relation to the, the validation and verification analysis, what we did, we did perform two types of uh, analysis. So first is the level of refinement where we investigated Sobel indices for each parameter uh, with different polynomial orders, as you can see here on the uh, left-hand side. So we use three different parameters and we try to understand do they converge over time. And also we've tried to investigate the ensemble output validation. So since our model is agent-based model and stochastic in nature, we uh, run the same model uh, more than 10 times. So this is a fragment of some of the model outputs that we got for our validation. And as you can see, they're all different values, but in the end it provides uh, the total mean for whole simulation runs that you have. Uh, so that's all for my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Diana. Um, as you know, uh, Peter has had to dash off to an unmovable appointment, uh, but he will be back tomorrow and Thursday. So uh, I will just um, work with uh, Diana just to field a couple of questions now. And what I'm suggesting is because we've gone a little bit over our timetable is that we try and do our sort of discussion um, Q&A last bit to finish the day. 